What's up YouTube? I hope each and every one of you guys are healthy and enjoying your lives to the fullest today. In today's video, I'm going to be reviewing the 2024 Subaru Impreza Sport. Huge thank you to Yao Nguyen over at Stallman Subaru of Sterling, Virginia for allowing me to do this review for you guys today. If you guys are interested in this particular 2024 Impreza or any Subaru product, I'll be sure to have Yao's information on screen as well as in the description box down below. But with that said, let's get into the video. First, let's talk about the exterior and the performance. So like I said, this is a 2024 Subaru Impreza Sport and this particular one has been painted in magnetite gray metallic. For 2024, the Impreza model as a whole did get a refresh both on the inside as well as the outside. And then also there is no more manual option for the 2024 model year with the Impreza, which is a shame, but that's just the way that manufacturers are moving. It's just, it, it is what it is. A CVT is now standard across all the Impreza models, but working our way into our headlights, the Impreza Sport does get LED steering responsive headlights with automatic high beams, as well as a black headlight bezel. And then towards the bottom of your front bumper is where you will find your LED fog lights. LED fog lights uh, are one, one of the things that come with the the sport when you guys upgrade from the base to the sport impreza now one thing that i really like about the 2024 refresh at least here on the exterior is the very aggressive front bumper design especially where the uh grill kind of meets with the headlights about right there i love the different angles and different body lines uh, on this front bumper i think it looks way better in my opinion than the 2023 model year but working our way to the center of the front bumper you guys do get a satin black grill with two gloss black grill bars on either side of your Subaru logo. Obviously your Subaru logo is located at the center of your front grill and that's about it for that front grill. Working our way down, you have a satin black lower front grill, as well as some satin black trim that surrounds your LED fog lights on both sides. And I just did a video with the 2024 Impreza RS, and like this like L-shaped trim piece was gloss black on that, and obviously on that side as well. Also, if you guys were wondering about the ground clearance on the Sport, you guys get 5.1 inches of ground clearance. But working our way, down the side one thing another thing actually excuse me uh, that i really like about the 2024 model year design is this fender crease and you also see that body line that kind of accents that fender crease very very nicely i think that adds to the aggressive design of the 2024 model year now another thing i wanted to say for the 2024 model year uh, is that with the impreza sport you guys get a sport tuned suspension as well as the sport specific 18 inch dark gray with machine finish wheels. And these wheels are wrapped in 22540 Yokohama Avid S34 tires, which by the way, these are the same exact tires that are found on the Impreza RS. And I'll show you guys a view of the tread pattern on those tires. There's really not that much uh, wheel gap between the fender and the tire. Um, so, you know, can't get the best view on the tread pattern, but I tried the best that I could. Now, this particular one has been optioned with the $1,900 option package 23, and that bit, uh, basically gives you guys these heated wipers up here. So basically when the wipers are in their parked position, you may be able to see it. I'm not sure if the GoPro is gonna be able to pick it up, but you see those lines, that area right there is all heated. So basically if you live in the Northeast, you live in Alaska, you live in a place where it snows or it ices, uh, basically your windshield wipers are not gonna ice up because they have that uh, heater right there. Again, that's a part of the $1,900 option package 23. But working our way down the side, you guys do get body color mirror caps with integrated turn signals. These side view mirrors are manual folding and then also with the option package 23, you guys get heated exterior mirrors and the blind spot monitoring, which is located about right here on the driver's side. You see that little nipple right there and then over about like right there on your passenger side side view mirror. Now also with option package 23, you also do get a power sunroof, which is located at the top. But back into the Sport as standard, you get black window trim, you get keyless access on your front two doors. The rear two doors do not get the keyless access function. You get a satin black shark fin antenna as well as a body color roof spoiler. You also get a black taillight bezel back here as well. I believe these taillights are incandescent. You get a rear window defroster, single speed rear wiper, Subaru logo at the center of your hatch. And then below that is where you will find your backup camera. Backup camera does come standard as well as you have your chrome badging on 
the hatch as well. Just under your Subaru logo is where you'll find a little pad. Make sure you have your key fob in your pocket when you guys press on this pad and the hatch will open up. Or if the vehicle's unlocked, you can also open up the hatch. But working our way into the hatch area, this one has a couple different options back here. So this has the $161 rear seat back protector, which is basically like a floor mat on the back of the seat. So let's say you have a wet dog, uh, you know, you just took your dog for a walk and it jumped in some of this water over here. And then it comes into your vehicle and tries to like rub up against the back of the seat. Well, if you didn't have that, then it'd be rubbing up against that carpeting and your car would probably smell pretty bad after that. But this is basically like a rubber floor mat on the back of the seat to protect that mold and that smell from going into that carpeting now this one also has the 132 dollars all-weather mats which are located here they're basically rubber floor mats and then this also has the 132 dollars cargo tray which is basically like a rubber floor mat that covers the entire trunk area these are the standard floor mats they're carpeted that come with the sport so you can see they say impreza on them the rs ones uh carpeted ones that come with the rs are a lot sweeter than the ones that come with this obviously but the rs is obviously more expensive and then uh you guys have a light on this side you also have grocery bag holders one right there and then one on this side right there as well you get a little cubby down in there you could set a cup holder or a cup excuse me and then another one down in there this does not come with a spare tire but you do get a tire inflator kit which is right there and then get a little bit of storage space down in here as well um, but really that's kind of about it for this trunk area and uh, just like the RS model I just did and then also like the 2024 Crosstrek I did a video with you now have like this mountainous design on this trim piece here and obviously on this side as well um, so that is a closer look at that and then last but not least at least option wise this does also have the $132 rear bumper applique which is basically like a piece of paint protection film that goes from about like right here all the way to right here again so you guys you know when you're loading up your vehicle instead of scratching the bumper itself you have basically like a plastic sticker that's going to protect the bumper from here to over here so you don't have to worry about scratching up the top of the rear bumper because of that paint protection film which again is a 132 dollar option but close in that lift gate you get a body color rear bumper with two reflectors on both sides as well as a satin black rear valence back here if you guys were wondering about the axle ratio it is a three 70 axle ratio and then for 2024 the Impreza model as a whole doesn't matter if it's the base doesn't matter if it's the sport or the RS they all got a upgraded fuel tank from a 13.2 gallon fuel tank to a 16.6 gallon fuel tank and there are no octane recommendations or requirements for the sport or any of the Impreza trim levels which is very very nice personally I almost like the wheels on the sport better than the ones on the RS. So the RS video is gonna be posted before this video here. So if you guys, you know, you're like, should I get the Sport? Should I get the RS? I have videos of both, so you can check out the RS video if you want to. It's gonna be linked in the upper right-hand section of this video, um, so you guys can compare the two if that is what you wanted to. But again, I like these wheels a little bit more. Let me know what you think. But with that out of the way, let's move into performance. Popping open that hood reveals that two liter naturally aspirated boxer four cylinder that makes 152 horsepower and 145 pound feet of torque. It is mated to a linear tronic CVT that does have an eight speed manual shift mode for a zero to 60 time in nine seconds flat. If you guys were wondering about fuel economy, you can achieve 27 miles per gallon in the city, 34 miles per gallon on the highway for 30 miles per gallon combined with standard all wheel drive. I know those horsepower figures are a little bit underwhelming. I understand that, but I do believe that the fuel economy numbers more than make up for the low horsepower numbers. But if you guys are enjoying the video so far today, please be sure to give this video a big thumbs up. Please hit that subscribe button. I am now on my journey to 100,000 subscribers and I cannot get there without your guys' help. So if you guys are enjoying the video, give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, but let's move into the interior. Moving into the interior, like I mentioned to you guys earlier on in the video, you guys do get keyless access standard with the Sport. So all you gotta do is have your key fob in your pocket, walk up to the vehicle, put your hand behind the door handle and the vehicle will unlock. You can also run your finger across these two hash marks right here and that will lock the vehicle. So now the vehicle is locked. But a couple things I wanted to show you guys that have to do with the key fob starting from the top, you get your lock function, then the Subaru logo is your unlock function. Pressing on that button really doesn't do anything because this doesn't have a power lift gate, but it does like pop open the latch for your hatch, uh, but that's really about it. And then all the way at the bottom, you have your panic function, but moving on into the interior, the Sport does get a cloth 
interior. So taking a look at the driver's side door panel, basically this whole area that I'm pointing out with my uh, pointer finger is all cloth. And then coming down just a tad bit, you guys do get a leather wrapped armrest with some red accent colored stitching. You get a black door handle, some gray trim around that. Power side view mirror controls, unlock and your lock functions, automatic up and down windows in the front, but you do not get automatic up or down windows in the back. Then this is to restrict your passenger window privileges. And then one thing that I really like about the Subaru, doesn't matter if it's an Impreza, an Outback, or really any of the uh, Subaru models, they always have a great spot you guys can set your phone in the door panel. Uh, so that's an iPhone 14 Pro Max. It's a, one of the bigger phones on the market and it fits in there, no problem. And then you get a great spot. You can set a Deer Park water bottle and a little bit of mist miscellaneous storage space right there. This is what the driver's seat looks like. One of my nags for the 2024 model year for the Crosstrek and the Impreza is that you no longer have the headrest adjustments, which I think is a big miss on Subaru's part. So now it's just a fixed headrest. Again, I think that's a big miss, uh, but the, that's just my personal opinion. But you know, that adjustable headrest really adds to the comfortability of the Crosstrek and the Impreza. And you know, you no longer have it. So it is what it is. But you guys do get keyless access, which also means you do get push button start as standard with the sport. So all you gotta do is have your key fob in the interior, push your foot down on the brake and then push to start. And that is what it sounds like when it fires up. I'm gonna close the door and then turn off the climate control system just so you guys have a better audio uh, of what I'm saying. Starting over here, this is to adjust the brightness and or dimness of your gauge cluster and your backlit buttons. You get a manual tilting and telescoping steering wheel, meaning the steering wheel comes towards you and it goes up and down as well. So you can adjust that to your liking. Let's take a look at our turn signal stock. Not only is this your turn signal stock, this is also your headlight control stock, your fog light control stock, and your high beam control stock. But first, let's take a listen to the turn signal. That is what the turn signal sounds like. Then this is your headlight control stock, headlights off, automatic, daytime running lights on. This does not have LED daytime running lights. Basically it just turns like your turn signals on at the same exact time uh, and just keeps them always on if that makes sense. And then all the way to the top, headlights in the always on position. And then this fog lights off, fog lights on. Uh, and that's kind of about it for that. I'd leave it in automatic. You get a vinyl wrapped steering wheel. Let's take a listen to the horn. <laughs> That is what the horn sounds like on the 2023 Impreza. Now, when you guys upgrade from the base to the Sport, which is what we're in now, you get uh, steering wheel mounted paddle shifters with your downshift paddle on the left-hand side of the steering wheel and your upshift paddle on the right-hand side of the steering wheel. This is to go back on a track. This is to go forward on a track. This is to switch between your different media sources. These buttons here are to control your 4.2 inch productivity screen located at the center of your dash. That is to pick up on a phone call. That is to mute the audio system as well as hang up on a phone call. That is to speak to the vehicle. Basically, you can tell the vehicle to do something for you, like uh, mess with the HVAC controls. And then these are your volume controls. Adaptive cruise control settings on the right-hand side of the steering wheel, as well as I believe like your lane keeping stuff is over here as well. Um, but yeah, those settings are there. And then with the Sport, you guys get SI Drive, which is basically Sport and Intelligent mode. Uh, so you have two different drive modes here. And then that is your windshield wiper control stock. Now let's work our way into the gauge cluster. So on the left-hand side, you have your RPM gauge with your coolant temperature gauge. And then on the right-hand side, you have your speedometer and your fuel gauge. Uh, working our way into the productivity screen. Up top there is basically your instant fuel economy. So let's say we're coasting down a hill. This will come over to this side, basically signifying that we're getting good fuel economy at that current moment. Right now, this is basically showing your audio stuff. You can adjust what's there. That's the digital speedometer readout that lets us know that we're in park. Transmission status stuff right there. Uh, and then that is letting us know that we're in intelligent mode. If I come over here and press this S, that's basically sport mode. And then that lets us know that we're in sport mode down there. That is your trip A information. Actually, that's trip B information, excuse me. And then that's your odometer. If you guys wanna reset that information, those values back down to zero, press and hold on this those numbers will go back down to zero as such. But again, to control what you see on this screen, you have these arrows here. So right now we're going down one. That's the time and the temperature. That's the fuel range. That is the fuel range again. That is uh, some more analytical data stuff. This is a pretty cool screen. So basically when you guys come up to a stop at a stoplight and the auto stop start system turns the vehicle off, it counts how long the vehicle has been off for and then how much fuel it has saved on that trip with the auto stop start system turning the vehicle off. And then that's your tire pressure stuff. And then that's back in the audio stuff. Basically, if this was my vehicle, this is the screen that I would leave it on personally. But again, that's all personal preference. Working our way over to this screen. So when you guys upgrade to the Sport, 
this 11.6 inch Starlink infotainment system with the wireless Apple CarPlay and the wireless Android Auto comes standard. So the Sport and the RS trim levels both get this screen as standard. If you guys get the base, you get a seven inch screen. So coming up over here, that's your hazard button. This is your volume control knob as well as your mute button. So if you press that, that will mute the audio system. That will unmute it. And then if you press and hold on that, that will turn this entire screen off. I can press and hold on that. And again, that's gonna cancel that function that I just did. That's your front defroster. You guys get dual zone climate control with the sport. So those are your driver temperatures. Those are your passenger temperature controls. And then you have your rear window defroster and your tuning knob. Um, basically, that's kind of about it for the physical buttons and stuff. Up top here, you have your temperature. That's the time. You got your audio stuff. Click over, that will bring you into your temperatures and speed stuff come over all the way and that's your weather and then let's go into the home screen so this is what your home screen looks like you got your radio media phone etc basically you can go into your instant apple carplay by the push of that button and then that will bring you into your apple carplay stuff flipping over to this screen you get your display off so basically if you press that that will turn the display off i'm not gonna do that because i'm gonna press and hold on that again and uh, that's auto vehicle hold. Basically, if you guys are stuck in traffic and you're tired of pushing your foot down on your brake by yourself, if you turn that on, basically the vehicle will hold you in place by itself with its braking system. And then that is to turn your traction control system on or off. And then you have these different shortcut buttons down here, basically to bring you into your vehicle information stuff. So that is one of the screens. This is your driver assistance screen. And then you have more settings over here. That is to turn your auto stop start system on or off. And then that's your home button, obviously. This will bring you in between your different devices. My phone is the only phone connected. And then if you see that little icon right there, that lets us know that we are connected to Apple CarPlay. But coming down all the way, this is your different driver profiles. I am in the default profile because, you know, this isn't my vehicle, so I'm not going to mess with that. And then also, if you guys, you know, wanted to bring up the climate control throughout this entire screen, basically this is what the climate control screen looks like at all times. But if you wanted that to go throughout the entire screen, you press right there and then that brings you into the entire climate control screen. And that's a look at that. One thing that I really like about Subarus is that with their climate control screen, you guys can see you have the same function down there, but basically that's to blow more air on your face and a little bit of air on your feet, or you can split that 50-50. I've never really seen that on any other vehicle besides a Subaru. Uh, and that is something that I always point out in my videos because you know that's a nice thing that you can do. And I wish more vehicles did that, but coming down a tad bit more auxiliary jack, USB-C port and a USB-A port. In the RS trim level, this area down here was a wireless charging pad. Obviously, you may be able to tell that the Sport does not come with the wireless charging pad as standard. I'm not sure if you can get it as an option, but if you can, I'll put it on screen if you can or you cannot. This whole area also looks different uh, here in the Sport as compared to the RS that I just came out of. Basically, the RS looked a lot nicer, a little bit sportier, and you had a nice shift boot, whereas this one basically is very basic. Uh, but if you guys wanted to go into your manual shift mode, go into drive, flip that over to the left, and now you can control the transmission with the steering wheel mounted paddle shifters and it lets you know what gear you are in on the lower left hand side of your productivity screen. Go back into park. With the $1,900 option package 23, you guys get heated seats. So your heated seats, you get two levels of adjustability here in the front. And then you have an electronic parking brake as standard as well. It lets you know if the electronic parking brake is on by that red light there. If you guys want to disengage the electric parking brake, make sure you push your foot down on the brake and then push down on that. And then that will let you disengage it. If you don't put your foot down on the brake, then it won't let you disengage it. Two cup holders here, and then you get a 12 volt power outlet down here. So basically if you guys have a radar detector, you can plug in your radar detector there, run the line and then set your radar detector up top there. You get a nicely padded and leather wrapped armrest with some red accent colored stitching get a good amount of storage space down there i'd say like 60 to 65 percent of my forearm fits down in there and then closing that back up you have another spot you could set a phone down in there if you wanted to um so yeah a lot of great places you could set a phone over here you get some more of that light gray trim that leads nicely into your door panel you get you do not get a lockable glove box but you get quite a bit of storage space in your glove box you get a standard rear view mirror i believe you can get a auto dimming mirror with the compass and the home link uh, as an option not 100 percent sure on that but if you can do that i'll put that on screen as well that lets you know if your passenger airbag is on or off you have um, this basically like roadside assistance stuff. Like basically think of this as like Subaru's version of OnStar. One thing that's pretty cool is that uh, with the Sport, you guys can download the Subaru app 
uh, and you can remote start your vehicle from that app. And you can also like remote locate your vehicle through that app as well, which is kind of cool. Um, and then if you guys want the lights to turn on when you open up the door, flip this switch to the left. Now when the doors open up, the lights turn on. If you guys don't want that to happen, you can flip that over to the right and then that doesn't happen. With the option package 23, which is a $1,900 option, you guys also get this power sunroof. So uh, obviously the sunroof slides and it also tilts up. If you guys wanna tilt it, press that and it tilts up. And obviously you guys know how a sunroof slides, so I don't have to show you that. This is what your visor looks like. You get a little spot right here that you can set money, registration, or any small paper product. Folding this down, you get a vanity mirror with a vanity light. And then the visor itself does not slide, but this little piece down here slides out. Very, very nice. Driver gets an Opu panel. The front passenger also gets an Opu panel over there. And then um, as standard, like with the base, with the Sport, with the RS, you guys get the uh, eyesight system so basically you have your different eyesight cameras behind these plastic pieces here for all your driver assistance features now i'm going to read over a couple you know things that come standard with the sport so uh what comes standard for the 2024 impreza sport include the 11.6 inch starlink infotainment system with the wireless apple carplay and the wireless android auto you also get adaptive cruise control with lane centering assist keyless access the sport and intelligent drive modes the steering wheel mounted paddle shifters, the six speaker sound system, and a few other things uh, that you guys can read because I'm gonna throw the window sticker on screen now for you guys to take a look at. Basically, you guys can take a look at all the standard stuff, all the optional stuff, and um, all the warranty stuff. But basically, I'm just gonna highlight the MSRP. So the MSRP of the way that this particular 2024 Subaru Impreza Sport is specced is $28,542. So this is about, uh, what's that, $3,000 cheaper than the Impreza RS that I was in the other, or just a couple hours ago before this video um, so if you want a little bit more power you guys might want to step up to the RS as well as you know the interior is a little bit nicer because you get the leather wrapped steering wheel as well as some more of that red coloring on the interior like the accenting um, and it also just looks a little bit better but I do like the wheels on this sport so let's say you want a little bit better fuel economy because this doesn't get that much better fuel economy than the RS but if you want a little bit better fuel economy and you want to save a chunk of money then the sport is the one to get but if you guys want you know the cool looking one with the black accenting on the outside with the red accenting on the inside you know then this uh the rs might be the one that you guys might want to get but before we move into the driving portion of the review i do want to show you guys what we got going on in the rear seats of the impreza sport so taking a look at the rear door panel you guys can see it looks similar to what you would find in the front uh, you got a great spot that you can set a phone you get a leather wrapped armrest with some accent stitching uh, you do not get automatic up or down windows back here but your window does go all the way down black door handle and a good amount of miscellaneous storage space down there and then this is what your rear seats look like stepping up from the base to the sport gives you this center fold down armrest with two cup holders so that is what that looks like and then uh, in the RS, you had a USB-C port and a USB-A port, whereas this does not have that. Uh, you also do not get a seat back pocket behind the driver's seat, but you do get a seat back pocket behind the passenger seat. The RS is the exact same with the seat back pockets. You get a dome light up top here. You get an Opu panel with a spot you could set your dry cleaning, and you have the same stuff over there on the passenger side as well. I'm five foot nine. I am adjusted behind myself. You guys can see I have a lot of leg room left, a lot of knee room left, as well as quite a bit of headroom left over uh, as well. Probably like three or four inches of headroom left over. So I'm actually pretty comfortable back in these seats. I think even if you were like six foot, maybe six foot one, I think you'd still be comfortable back here. But you know, when you start getting into like six, three, six, four, six, five, that's when your head might start hitting the roof. But you know, we've talked about the exterior, we've talked about the performance, and now we've talked about what's going on here in the interior of the Impreza Sport. So I wanna see what this thing's like to drive as I'm assuming you guys do as well. So I will see you guys in the driver's seat all right guys and now on to the driving portion of the review where i always start my videos here and we go over these speed bumps at five miles an hour and then i rate them on a scale of one to ten did very well over the first one let's see how it does here over this second one again five by five miles an hour nothing will ever be a ten and i'm gonna give this thing an 8.2 on a scale of one to 10, it did very well over those speed bumps. Again, nothing will ever be a 10. If you're over a nine, that's like Rolls Royce territory. Uh, like nine and a half is like Rolls Royce territory. So 
did very well over those speed bumps, uh, all things considered. Now, like I mentioned to you guys a little bit earlier in the video, I just did a video with the 2024 Impreza RS, and now I'm doing a 20 video with the 2024 Impreza Sport. So let's see how it compares power-wise. Okay, so this, I mean, they feel relatively similar, <coughs> excuse me, uh, power-wise, but you can definitely feel a little bit more power with the RS. Now, let me get on it a little bit. Yeah, there's just a little bit more punch to the RS. I mean, you would hope it's got like 30-some more horsepower than this, um, and it also, you know, you're paying about $1,000, no, you're paying about $100? I don't know what the exact number is. Anyways, uh, for 30 more horsepower, you're paying $3,000 more. So it's about uh, $1,000 per 10 horsepower. So if that's worth it to you, then you might want to get the RS. If that's not worth it to you, then the Sport is fine. Uh, but really, when upgrading to the RS, you're not losing any fuel economy. I mean, you, you're losing about a mile per gallon in the city. I can't remember the exact highway uh, figure with the RS, but I do know. I believe this gets like 27 in the on the high, or in the city, and the I know the RS was doing 26 in the city. So, you know, it really doesn't lose that much uh, with the bigger motor in the RS as compared to this fuel economy wise, and you get more power. So I am definitely a fan uh, of power. You know. I'm never going to complain about having more power. I'd rather get worse fuel economy and still have more power. It's just the way that I am. But I know a lot of people think differently than me. So I'm going to go out this, uh, you know, unbiased, I guess you could say. Um, and honestly, you know, neither one, whether it be the Sport or the RS, neither one are going to feel like the WRX. So if you're coming from a WRX and you're like, oh, I like the way that the 2024 Impreza looks, just know that you're not gonna have the same feeling power-wise at all that you get in the WRX versus the Impreza. Now I'm gonna give you guys about five or 10 seconds to hear what this sounds like without me talking and you can listen to the road and the wind noise. And like I said in the video that I just did with the RS, I feel like they added more sound deadening to the 2024 Impreza as compared to the 2023. It just sounds a lot more, not a, I wouldn't say like a lot more solid, but it definitely sounds more solid here on the interior uh, than the 2023 did. Like it's definitely just a little bit more refined. And you know, that's just the way it is. You know, you would hope it would be like that. This is the evolution from you know the 2023 to the 2024 it's not revolutionary it's evolutionary um and this definitely is on the better side of the evolution because it's quieter here on the interior you come now with the 2024 with the rs you get the bigger motor which equals a faster zero to 60 time um so you know they definitely did a good job with the 2024 model year i hate when people go under the speed limit but one thing that I always like about Subaru products, whether you get the base model or something like that, you know, it doesn't matter if it's an Impreza, it doesn't matter if it's an Outback, they all come with the Subaru EyeSight system that includes the adaptive cruise control, that forward collision alert that you guys just heard, um, as well as just a couple other features that really like help. And I love how they come standard and they don't come as like an option that you really got to pay for. So that's something that I appreciate. And then once this light turns green up here, I wanted to show you guys that feature that I was mentioning earlier in the video. Uh, actually, I don't think I mentioned that, but I'm going to... I did mention one of these features and it's basically the auto stop start feature counts how long the vehicle has been off for and how much fuel it has saved. So with that said... You can see it's counting how long the vehicle has been off for and how much fuel has been saved. And then also when that vehicle ahead moves, it lets you know that the vehicle ahead has moved. So those are two really cool features to pretty much all Subaru products uh, that I always like to highlight in the video uh, because I think they're cool features, um, especially the vehicle ahead has moved feature. So let's say, you know, hypothetically you're on your phone at a stoplight. Um, it will let you know, hey, dude, you got to go ahead. You got to move because the vehicle in front of you has moved. So I always think that that's a really nice feature. Um, and, you know, that comes standard across the board with Subaru products, which is something that I like. Um, also, that lane departure warning is also standard with the EyeSight suite of features. Um, 
So it's just very helpful. You know what I mean? And especially like in a $28,000 car to have those kinds of features, it's very much appreciated. You know, I uh, always kind of mention this, you know, there are certain like $70,000 vehicles that don't even come standard with adaptive, uh, actually there are a ton of vehicles, doesn't matter if it's a 40, 50, 60, $80,000 vehicle that don't come standard with adaptive cruise control. But here, this $28,000 vehicle does come standard with adaptive cruise control, which is just very much appreciated. And it's something that I always, you know, point out and appreciate in my videos. But I'm gonna give you guys a little mild acceleration here. So, I mean, the reality is it's got enough power to get you guys around town. And especially if you don't really care about a vehicle having a ton of power, uh, and you're just looking for more for something that's comfortable that has you know a good amount of features but it doesn't have like every feature in the book um, then this is a great vehicle for you because it gets great fuel economy it's got enough power to get you guys up and around town you know if you're cruising 80 on the highway and you want to pass somebody you know that's where this thing's gonna struggle a little bit because it doesn't have that top end power um, but really for around town and low end speeds and stuff like that It's got more than enough get up and go than you need and if you need a little bit more power You guys can always upgrade to the Impreza RS because like I said It makes about 30 horsepower more and about 30 pound-feet of torque more uh, than this and or the base model so you know, you got three different options when it comes to the Impreza. You can either get the base, which is, you know, pretty bare bones, or you can get the Sport, which, you know, has a nice blend of features for the price. You know, it doesn't have everything. Um, like the Impreza RS that I just did a video with had option package 33, which was like a $2,070 option. Uh, and that came with the Harman Kardon sound system. That came with the uh, power sunroof. And that also came with another feature that I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, but... Uh, basically like you have all the features that you need on this but if you want a little bit more you can always upgrade to the RS and really you know it's three thousand dollars in the grand scheme of things in the world really isn't all that much money I know it's a lot of money but you know for three thousand bucks you get a bigger motor you get quite a few more features you get the upgraded sound system I don't think that's that bad of a deal to be honest plus it looks a little bit cooler because you get those uh, nice side side skirts on that that are black you get the black mirror caps you get some black trim on the front that's also gloss black um, here I'll show you guys that again see how it's counting and then how much fuel it has saved that's what I was showing you guys on the interior part of the video I think that's a pretty cool feature as well but yeah I mean you pretty much get everything you need on this you don't get all like the features that you don't need however you know you can upgrade to option package 23 and get the blind spot monitoring and stuff like that so you know you get what you need to on this uh, but before we end out today's video I do want to do a 0 to 60 test so let's skip into that now all right guys and now on to our 0 to 60 test all we got to do is line up on our line we are in sport mode and floor it in three two one floored okay the RS is definitely more powerful All right, that was 60. I would definitely say that the RS is more powerful overall. I mean, it was noticeably more powerful, at least on that zero to 60 test. However, you know, driving around town, you can't really know that, notice that much of a difference. I mean, you can definitely notice a little bit of difference, you know, when you're accelerating and stuff like that around town. But, you know, when you're doing a floored zero to 60 test like that, yeah, I could definitely tell that the RS not only accelerated faster to 60 miles an hour, but it just also had more of an aggressive acceleration obviously you know to be expected you know it's a bigger motor makes more power all of that is to be expected but that's it for today's video if you guys did enjoy the video please be sure to give this video a big thumbs up please hit that subscribe button like i said to you guys earlier on in the video i am now on my journey to 100,000 subscribers and i cannot get there without your guys' help so if you guys took anything from this video please give it a thumbs up hit that subscribe button i'd greatly appreciate it but again that's it for today's video i will catch you guys in the next one peace